Roll for Romance is a podcast featuring five friends thirsty for D20. Welcome to Roll for Romance. I'm your DM, Emily, and today I have with me four incredible adventurers. Today, our question is, if your character had a job in the real world, what would that job be? I'm going to mix it up and start with Sarah slash Lanny. All right. So I feel like Lanny would have had a TikTok where (laughs) they were like motivating people to believe in themselves and stuff but then a bunch of people had like a parasocial relationship with them and started stalking them and so they had to (gasps) shut it down oh no and now they're like doing uh postmates or whatever (laughs) this is a tragic case (laughs) wow very real very real lanny get doxxed (laughs) oh poor lanny so what about hilrana slash des she would probably be a veterinarian Oh, oh, yes. Or a forest yeah. ranger. Yeah, you could do both. both or, or a forest both ranger slash veterinarian. Yeah. yeah. You could rehabilitate the a wildlife veterinarian. veterinarian. Yes. A wildlife <laughs> rehabilitator. <laughs> yes. That's a wonderful choice. I love that. I like the idea of Hilrana, like like if an animal got hurt in the forest, Hilrana just jumping down and out of a tree yeah. out of nowhere and just like yes. bandaging them up. I've got you, buddy. <laughs> and then disappearing in the trees again. What about Melees slash Lauren? So originally my answer was living statue, but then the TikTok was a really great idea because I feel like he would be an influencer. Yeah, definitely. Yes. <laughs> and just like have a bunch of skin regimen like uh-huh. tips and skin like the person like they drip the skin the the stuff yes. on their skin and rub it in and yeah. That would definitely be him. Oh yeah. And maybe he was kind of shilling for an MLM, but he's gotten out of that business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has like a couple of deleted videos yeah. from hyper shred. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to Holly slash Ferris. Okay, so I actually think that Ferris would either be a wealthy widow. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) um, A (laughs) madam for a very, very fancy service. Or a congresswoman. I I could see a congresswoman. I could see a congresswoman. They're evil. She would know everybody's business Mm -hmm. and use that to her advantage. Amazing. It could could be be all three. Because you could have gotten your money from the guy that you... Maybe. That mysteriously died, yeah. and then you could run for Congress. You were a madam first. Uh huh. I met my old yeah, husband, here. and he passed, and I got his congressional seat. And now I'm unstoppable. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this needs to be a television <laughs> this podcast. Yeah, this, this is, is horrifying. Good. I love it. <laughs> it probably happens a lot more than we think, though. That's, that's like, scary. Yeah, that's going to keep oh, me I up at night. Mine, but I don't have a character, so I, I have a real life job already. <laughs> yeah. um, what if you had your dream, dream job? job. Yeah. Yeah. What like, are my NPCs? What would Aneth be doing? She's living her best she life. She is living her She. I mean, she would own a shop, I'm sure. It would just probably be more like a, you know, like a crystals and, yeah. and tarot cards and that type of thing. What's Thaladin or Paladin's I was gonna say, job? I, I think Thaladin would be somebody that sells like supplements at a GNC or something sure. like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I've left three messages at Helrana's house, but no one has even seemed to be home. There's a huge stack of mail at the front door and their manservant didn't answer. I don't understand what's going on. They said they were going to help me. Ugh. It's pointless. The only people that could possibly have evidence that Grant didn't betray Celeste have disappeared. She and Mother are at the point now where I doubt they'll listen to reason, let alone allow an audience with outsiders. So even if they come back, I don't know what good they'd be now. All right, Sono. Time to make your own plan. If they won't listen to me and my support from Lanavern and the others is nowhere to be found, there's only one option left. Be the hero of the story for once, instead of just the comedic relief. Last time we had a bunch of different things happen, but we are back in Mirador and we left off with a person running into Miles on the street, kind of knocking each other down. And then the person getting up and saying, Dominus, I didn't know you were in the city. And that's where we were. And this is right after a hostage exchange. Just well, we can go <laughs> yeah. over the details of that with uh, talking to Archie. But let's let's pick up right after this guy has bumped into you, Miles. Miles will definitely help 
pick him up. But then as soon as he hears the name Dominus, he's going to be like, Dominus, how dare you? Do you see how big my muscles are? My dewy, glowing skin? Do I look like a Dominus to you? Oh, uh, is this some kind of joke? No, I am not Dominus. How do you know him? I, I'm super confused. I'm sorry. Uh, you're not, you're not Dominus? My bad, man. You just have somebody that looks exactly like you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you have any, do you have any siblings? Like, I, I'm... He's my twin. Where did you last see him? Where did I last see him? Oh, well, I, we did a caravan from Daros over to Aswar through the mountain pass, and he was part of the caravan. You definitely aren't him. He didn't talk very much. No. He's a silent greeting type. You guys type. look exactly the same. That's weird. Except his hair was longer now that I think about it. But not his lustrous, right? I mean, <laughs> uh... And he kind of like shakes his mane. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. <laughs> so melee. Are we hearing this? Yeah. You all are there. This is how I talk about Emily when she's not around. <laughs> <laughs> like her hair's not as good as mine, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> I got an 18. Yeah, your hair looks great. Um... <laughs> Roll for hair goodness. <laughs> no, it, it does. It looks really good. I'm just, I'm I so highlights. sorry. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. I didn't mean anything by it. I just genuinely thought you were Dominus. I was just confused because he said he was heading north rather than to the west. Did he say why? Why he was on this caravan? He didn't talk much at all. Honestly, I, I just wanted to say hi and then I was going to leave. Not a friendly guy. No. It's interesting I mean, that you'd want to say hi to him at all. If I bumped into somebody I knew, it would be kind of hard to not mm -hmm. say hi to them. That'd be really rude. But I'm sorry, man. I'm really sorry. Uh, I don't know anything about your family dynamics. I didn't mean to insult you. I'll just be, I'll just be on my way. Sure thing, brother. Thanks for the info. He picks up his satchel and walks away very confused. Melees. Is he talking about your, your twin? My twin? Mm -hmm. you Dominus to... Patatus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my lord. Yeah, I was not expecting to get any because I you know I've been looking for him. Yeah. I didn't have any information up to this point. So this is quite serendipitous. Well, yeah, that's one way to put it. But between me and you, of course I believe that your hair is more luxurious. Sugar, come on, please. Thank you. I appreciate that. I was, you know, it was a little bit insulting to be mistaken for him. You know, it hurt my feelings. I can understand. Nobody looks like you, darling. Even your twin. Thank you. I'm one of a kind, even though I have a twin. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you mention him? <laughs> Awkward day for that guy. <laughs> this has been an interesting day so far. Hostage exchange, yeah. that thing happened. Speaking of which, Archibald will come up to you and say, Oh, th thank you all so much for coming fairly promptly. I was only there for about six days. Oh my god, Jesus. <laughs> they pretty much took me right after you left. Archie, how is that possible? We haven't even been gone for six yes, days. Yes, you have. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's the... right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does take three it's days easy, Don't way. worry. It's easy to lose track of time. Especially when you're trapped in one room with only cat erotica to read for many days. Uh, oh. oh my goodness, that's strange. His captors were tabaxi. Oh. Well, anyway, uh, Mistress Hilrana, I have some things for you that they thankfully gave back. And he will hand you the sending stone that you usually use with your dad and your sweet bracelet. I just ordered a new sending stone. I'm very sorry. Maybe you can give uh, one in case you want somebody else to be able to talk to Greg. I don't know. Archie, why don't you have I already oh. have one. Oh, well, I should use it more often. We'll just keep it as a backup, I guess. Anyway, we can go back and get some sandwiches. I, we can get some cheese from Shea Cheese if you would like. I've heard here that the cod, I hope my cod is pretty good. Let's get you a treat, Archie. Yeah, you've had you some through cheese. it, honey. Oh, oh, oh. What would you oh, like, I, Archie? I couldn't possibly know. I'm fine. Oh, This think... isn't Archie's first time getting kidnapped. This is... And absolutely not. In fact, I really must go and see to your father you being in jail. Oh, oh yes, that's a good idea. It's fine. He won't be too upset that I didn't help for many days. He's a nice guy. Hopefully he wouldn't be upset given that you were kidnapped. No, I should have known better. I should have kept myself Jesus. out of being kidnapped. <laughs> Archie. 
Like you said, it's not my first time. I should have learned by now how to avoid No, it. I was just kidnapped as well. That's fair. <laughs> anyway, if you don't need sandwiches, I'm going to head back to the estate and create some kind of scheme for retrieving your father from jail. Are you sure we can't buy you some cheese? Oh no, that would be far too decadent. Let's buy the man some oh cheese. My God. I'm, I'm Archie, come, we're getting you cheese. If the mistress insists, I shall partake of the I cheese. I do insist. Only the best <laughs> cheese for you, Archie. Okay, so you can go to Shea Cheese and get him some delightful cheese. Mm-hmm. Have a nice sunny lunch. It's getting a little bit later in the day. And you do know that the book club is meeting in about like an hour or so. So you're pretty close by to Spellbound if you wanted to go or you don't have to go. You could try to go do something else with the rest of your day. Let's go. So, um, Milais, do you want to come to book club with us? You've read the book. I, yeah, I've read it for well, you, sure. You have, to, <laughs> <laughs> you have to buy two little things from the shop to kind of get entry. Do you want to just pop in and shop real quick? Yeah, let's do that. All right. I would love to go to a book club. Okay, so you make your way over to Spellbound, which is pretty quiet this time of day. You open the door, there's the little bell that goes off, and you are in the familiar atmosphere of the very dark, only lit by these drift globes, multicolored in the sky, all these beautiful tapestries, and a lot of creepy, weird, different types of artifacts and objects in here. There is a little note on the shop counter that says, basically back in 15. So there's nobody in here currently, but you can look around the shop. You do see after a minute or two, a large snake comes slithering out from a back room and comes up onto the counter and then looks at you. I want to buy the snake. <laughs> <laughs> the snake just does like a little thing with its tongue and just stares at you. <laughs> oh, hey, Slithers. It comes over to you. It slithers over and, <laughs> and comes, and if you'll let it, it will wrap up around your arm and come up onto your shoulder. Yes, I love giving him some pets. He will wrap around you, go back down, and then just go back onto the counter and stare at you again. Well, let's look around. What do you think you might be interested in? What is this shop about? (laughs) It is a magic shop. So there are magic objects. There's also a lot of books, a lot of spell components, a lot of scrolls, and then also just some weird shit like bones. And, you know, if you went to like an oddities type shop, What's the wildest thing in there? Oh, that mirror was really scary. That mirror is pretty bad. Oh, and the flying carpet. Oh, flying carpet. That could be fun. Yeah, there is a flying carpet. You did ascertain last time that it is incredibly expensive, so not in your budget currently. But there's also a mirror of life trapping that is probably the most ominous and spooky looking thing in the space. Life trapping. Yeah. What does it do? Was it, I mean, trap life? It is, yeah, basically, they can tell you because the shopkeeper had explained last time that it does indeed trap somebody's soul inside of there. I thought it was cool looking. I was going to get it from a fortune telling parlor. But then when she told us what it did, you know how I like looking at myself. I just can't help it. And I was just afraid I was going to suck my own daggone soul right into that mirror. And then what would I do? That's fair. I I understand. I I have the same problem. (laughs) I know. I wonder what it's like to be inside the mirror. It's pretty bad. Oh, (laughs) Oh oh my goodness. From from behind the curtain. (laughs) And you see the, for most of you, the familiar form of Aneth Tressile and Slithers will come back up onto her shoulder. She looks around at you and she says, new customer. Welcome. I'm here to join the book club. You're here to join the social club. All right. Well, Admission is purchasing two magic items. So please look around if you need anything. My name is Neth, and this is Slithers. Hello. I think I'm actually going to pick up that mirror. (gasps) Oh, that's a very, very valuable thing. Did they tell you about the dangers of the item? Well, they said if I looked into it too much, it might suck my soul out. Yes. Yes. I'll just keep a like a blanket over it or something. The mirror of life trapping is thirty thousand gold. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> not that I don't have that kind of money, <laughs> but um, of course, of course. Yeah, I, it just feels like I don't know. I'm not feeling the mirror anymore, not because of the money. It's just because I just naturally don't want it anymore. Make a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> I was done with this mirror when I saw it. <laughs> a ten. Let me do an insight for this lady. All right, I understand. It's not for everyone. 
you still seem like you are a man of taste. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have many other things that are quite rare and unique. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to throw a random number out there. It doesn't matter how high or low it is, uh, because I have that that money, right? But what if you had, you know, something that's like, I don't know, like 20 20 gold? 20 gold. Two things for 20 gold. Two items. I could go higher, but I, you know. But you're okay, all right. Just throwing a random number. Let me look in the bargain bin. (laughs) <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> Melee's blushes. He's embarrassed. <laughs> may interfere at this point and say, Oh, Miss Ineth, I think I found a lovely rose quartz crystal over there. If my friend was so kind to purchase it for me, and maybe another one, would that be fine for the social club? Make a persuasion check. 17. Well, it's typically magic items, so I would let it be one of the crystals and then one magic item. Like I said, I do have the bargain bin slithers. And slithers will come down off of her shoulder and go over and knock this very flimsy looking bin off of a shelf and then move his body over to you and just put it at your feet. Oh. Yeah. Ferris will act very enthusiastic over the cheapest thing there and be like, oh, Miles, would you? Could you? It is a very, I don't know why I'm saying this in her voice. It's like super, super tacky costume jewelry looking type thing. Oh, yeah. This is a necklace of funny friendship. <laughs> oh, me. It also does, I have to be honest, I am an honest woman, it does hold a bit of a curse on it. But it's only five gold. <laughs> the curse is that you have bunny poop for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> but me, I've always wanted a necklace of bunny friendship. How and she'll have you? Beat her eyelashes like, would you? Could oh, you? I could hero? never say no to you. <gasps> if this is what you truly desire, I would happily purchase it for you. Oh, me, Lace, a rose quartz crystal, which means, you know, love and a bunny friendship necklace. I just, oh, it's the best day ever. <laughs> Ever. I will gladly purchase these items for the lady. Oh, my hero. Wonderful. It will be 15 gold, please. Slithers, will you wrap this up for that kind gentleman? Slithers will get like a little piece of wrapping paper <laughs> and, and come over. Listen, Slithers loves it. Uh, no, wait, I think Melee's <laughs> wants to do the whole big reprint. Oh, yeah. The necklace oh, on Oh, okay, okay. All right. Oh, you want to wear it out of the shop? Oh, yes. Of course. Right. I did say it doesn't have a curse on it. The bunny poop thing? Yes. I'm not to be indelicate. Does that only happen when I'm wearing it? Yes. Okay, that's fine. Now flip the hair around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, I do love jewelry for my handsome man. All Thank right. you, Sugar. Now, how are you? Ah, do you have my book? I do, of course, yes. Thank you so much for lending them to me. I have them just as you left them. Wonderful. And I put Thank them on so the counter much. and I slide them over. How responsible. She'll pick them up and shelve them in a back area. I'm really glad that the curse didn't take effect on you. Wait, there was a curse? Oh, yes. I told you if you didn't return them that there would be a curse. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I so did know about that. Thank you very much. I appreciate <laughs> it. I hope that they aided you. Of course, yes. They had so many interesting historical facts. I've just never come across before, so... Yes, some of it is fairly biased and a bunch of crap. (laughs) Oh, okay. But the one book that, yes, the one book does does have more practical, if maybe a bit obscure information. So which one was the crap and which one was the more... You will recall from reading through them that, like, there are three of them that just seem like a bunch of nonsense, and then the one that you got, the ritual, seemed like it was more based in potential reality. Nice. I don't know if you have any questions, but I could could attempt to answer things. I'm not an expert, but I do know many things. Hmm, interesting. Um, Have you ever come across a dagger made of volcanic glass? I'm sure I have, yes. Are those common artifacts, or are they associated with anyone in particular? Hmm, I guess it would depend on where the volcanic glass came from. A lot of times I would think that it would be maybe ritualistic. I don't know. It Mm. doesn't seem like it would be the best weapon choice. Oh, no. No, no. Let me think. She's going to make a history check. That's 
not very good. Weapons aren't necessarily my specialty, but if it's volcanic glass, maybe the god of the forge, Vol? I'm sure there are other people that make volcanic glass, but that would be beyond my my knowledge. Oh, that's quite all right, but thank you for for offering. Anything else? I do need to, in a few minutes, start setting up. Are you coming to the book club? Oh, oh yes, yes, definitely. Oh, wonderful. I was hoping that's why you were here. Would any of you be willing to help me set up a little bit since you're here so early? Oh, of course. Oh, of course. Yeah. That would be very wonderful. Thank you. But yes, if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask while we set out the cookies. Oh, cookies. Yummy. I think the rest of the things in the ritual are things that I have some idea what sure. they are, so I'm not sure I would. Yeah. Yeah. Neely is just going to go over to Lanny and be like, hey, did, 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 did you read the book? Oh, yes, I did. I, uh, you mean the novel? Yeah. All right. Let me give you a little bit of a recap. Okay. Yeah. Come come with me. I'm going to give Miele an idea of what happened in the plot. And then like a few really specific things that he can throw in there to like prove that he actually read it. Like I was really moved by like this particular passage. Oh, yeah, totally. I read it. Okay. Do you guys want to know the plot of this? Yes. Book? Yes. 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 <laughs> this is very, very, uh, just, this is pretty much probably what you would say to me yes. to summarize it really fast. The book is called Kiss of Fire, and it is about an Afriti who meets a young, impressionable half-orc enchanter looking to find fortune in the pleasure city of Amaret. So yeah, it's this Afriti. He meets an impressionable half-orc who's an enchanter, and he studies underneath this Afriti. And the whole time, the Afriti is essentially offering that if he can complete his apprenticeship, that he will give him a wish afterwards. But it's this really brutal initiation, essentially, and he's, all the tasks that he has him do are very difficult. But over time, you know, they spend more time together. The very stern and off-putting Afridi, his flames calm down a little bit, and the half-orc, just because he's so... He's so excited and enthusiastic. He helps a little bit and they grow to become fond of each other. Isri is the Ifridi and Karash is the half orc. So yeah, that's the whole kind of premise is when they're done with the apprenticeship, uh, Karash will get his wish. There's at one, one point where assassins come to try to kill Isri, the Ifridi, and Karash saves his life. But in the process, as he's shielding him, he takes the blow from the assassin mm. and he's lying there dying and this is the moment that Isri the Afridi starts to be like I'll do anything to keep you here I'll give you any wish that you want Karash is basically like I don't care about wishes anymore I just want to be with you and Aww. then romantic stuff but it ends on a cliffhanger that's pretty much the end of the book Isri is trying to figure out a way to bring Karash back from the brink of death and you don't know whether he's died or not Wow. And there's lots of like very tense pining moments because it's written from both characters' perspectives. It alternates and it lots of mutual pining for each other that the other person doesn't know about. So I give Mile some of those pining scenes. Like I'm opening my copy and I'm like, look, look, so that so this this there's this symbolism in this paragraph. (laughs) Perfect. Yeah. Symbolism. Yeah, symbolism. Like so there's symbols in it. (laughs) <laughs> oh they're metaphors metaphors yes. okay what's a metaphor oh um, a metaphor is where there's a literal meaning of what happened but that thing that we see has a figurative meaning as well um that has emotional significance or maybe uh predict something that might happen later is there gonna be a quiz oh no okay but yeah. if you want to bring one of these points up while we're talking about it it'll make it look like you read the book wink (laughs) thank you yeah appreciate it no problem and he runs her off and he just is like repeating the words like (laughs) metaphor is right symbolism yes yeah (laughs) perfect you do set out the little snake-shaped cookies and Aww. get the different refreshments out. People do start to arrive as it gets closer to the thing. And yes, I do have all of the book club members because Ooh. that's how my brain works. First, you have a male wood elf who comes in. He's wearing a very fancy buttoned up shirt. Everything's pressed very well. He looks a little bit hairy, though. His hair looks a little bit must. And um, he will look around at you all and, and say... Oh my, 
new people. Wonderful. I wasn't expecting quite so many people here at this meeting, but it's always great to see new faces. He kind of just stands and holds his hands together and looks around awkwardly. It's all right. It's always good to have new people in the group. Everyone, this is Garahel Alnar, or just Gary, if you'd like to call him that. Yeah, G- Gary's fine. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Gary. It's nice to meet y'all. Hi, Gary, I'm Lenny. Wonderful. Actually, you know what? I don't know why I'm doing this. I should wait for introductions until everyone arrives. But yes, uh, G- G- Gary, if you wouldn't mind getting the drinks, that would be wonderful. He, he will go and help bring out some beverages. Unless anybody wants to talk to him, I'm just going to keep going going. forward. Hi, Gary. Um, Whatever, (laughs) Gary. Uh, (laughs) Next will come somebody that looks very familiar to Miles, an unexpected person that Miles has not seen in a while. A man wearing a guard uniform enters the place and it's a little bit of a tense moment, And he, but he smiles at Aneth when he sees her and then around the corner sees you, Miles, and it is Captain Jeremy Maxwell from the very beginning, your bud, who didn't, unfortunately wasn't able to go to the bachelorette or bachelor party. Melees! Jeremy, what are you doing here? I didn't know you read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I do know how to read. Uh, That's amazing. Did you know that actually most people in the city know how to read? It's part of one of the initiatives here. That's ridiculous. Uh, Does yeah. he always not know how to read? He, he is was, a negative one intelligence. You know, how, you can probably. Well, I, he can read. read, but like, I feel like comprehension. You like when. <laughs> We were coming back yeah. in the carriage. It was mostly like you reading to Aww. him. Maybe. Yeah. Like he can't read fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do read. A lot of times when there's downtime at the guard post, yeah. I, I can spend some time reading. I so actually read on purpose too. Yeah. Like for these, fun. Oh, these books are amazing, especially the ones by Evangeline Sparks, which sure. is Kiss of Fire. Mm-hmm. Wow. So many metaphors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of metaphors. He <laughs> looks surprised when you say that. He's like, yeah. So how have you been, man? Oh, Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. It has been a wild ride since we last talked. Did you know I actually got to go to the wedding? You went to the wedding? Yeah. Wow. And the bachelor. Well, you well, know, yeah, because the bachelor I know. party I got so me bad. set up for that. But no, no. I mean, uh, well, why did you, you feel bad about that? Because I invited you and then I wasn't able to go. Oh. But I heard it was great. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was a... It's a regular melee's joint. It was great. You for sure yeah. made it. Wedding was weird. Any. Wedding yeah, was weird. I heard that a little bit, but yeah. Like uh, how so? What? Well, everyone ended up naked, so there's that. That's that was true. Yeah. Oh yeah. It definitely happened. There's dancing. It got a little. You know. I thought that was just bullshit rumors. No. Oh my god. No. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about this. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. know. Maybe you shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, How well, about great. you? I've been doing really well. I recently got promoted. I was working down Congrats. in the lower terrace, and now I'm up at a guard post in the up here in the upper terrace. And that's how I found this shop. And Lady Aneth over there really has drives a hard bargain. It's wonderful to have you, Captain Maxwell. Yeah, it's great. It's great to be well, you here. Should, you should come visit me in in at Greg's house. Greg, I'll, I'll give, uh, yeah, you can give him an address. I would address, love that. Yeah. yeah, we should meet up. Yeah. He can keep, keep chatting with you, but other people are going to arrive. A very harried looking halfling woman who's very young comes running in right as it's about time to start. She has a whole bunch of coffee drinks that are very precariously balanced in one arm. And she comes in and just slams them down on the table and then just sits down and starts being like, oh, oh. Okay, I made it. Great. Oh, new people. Awesome. Hi. Hello. Wow, this has really grown. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Gary. Hey, new people. Hi. 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 Uh, I'm Kelda. It's it's wonderful to have you here. Uh, awesome. It's wonderful to be here. I'm Lanny. Nice to meet you. Hi, Lanny. And Aneth will say, yes, it's, I believe it is time so we can do a round of introductions that haven't already been done. As you all know, I am Aneth, the owner of Spellbound. This here is Slithers. Does everyone have their book or do you need to borrow a copy? I know you forget a lot, Gary. 
And Gary rifles through his bag. And is like, oh, yeah, if you don't mind. And Slithers will bring him over a copy of the book. And he looks sheepish. Anyway, we have four new members this week. We're missing one, but she's usually late, so it'll be fine. We'll just get started with Let's start with you, ma'am. Uh, what's your name? Introduce yourself to the group. Tell us a fun fact. Well, hi, y'all. My name is Ferris Devine, and my interesting fact is probably that I'm a fortune teller at the Beholder. Come see me sometime. Oh, I love a woman who self-promos in an intro. <laughs> <laughs> <She's a little laughs> and you, fine sir. Hello, I'm Melee's Gloriosis. Yes, that one. Uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, and a fun fact about me is that I, I sometimes moonlight as a living statue. Oh, I just pose. Fascinating. I've, me like such I've, a I've turned some yeah. people into statues in my time. But <laughs> well, you wouldn't have to turn me into one. Living. I can hold a pose, no problem. Oh, you would probably be a great model for Evangeline Sparks. <gasps> oh. He would, wouldn't he? And everybody starts yeah. chattering sure. a little oh. bit about it. Heel you, pose. You know, I am a, I am friends with Evangeline Sparks myself. Oh, yeah. You could be a model if she's looking for anyone. But anyway, and you, dear, introduce yourself. I'm Hilarana Drama of Greg the Gregarious fame. Yes. I'm sure you all know of Greg. There yeah, are no Greg. interesting facts about me, unfortunately. What? Well, that's not true. That's, you turn into a bear seems sometimes. All druids turn into bears sometimes. Oh, that's but not you're a that druid. interesting. You're druidic magic. Fascinating. She just stares at you. <laughs> and she uh, Hilana just stares back <laughs> <laughs> awkwardly. Moving on. We have next uh Kelda. Would you like to introduce yourself? The halfling will stand up and, and brush some crumbs because she's eating a, a very fast lunch as she's sitting there shoving some cookies in her face. Uh, hi, I'm Kelda. I, I, uh, fun fact, oh gosh, I work at the Trembling Imp. It's just down the street a little bit, but I've been coming here on my lunch breaks to try to kind of learn about the arcane. Oh my gosh, this place is so cool. Uh, I'm hoping to get into the Institute, but right now, you know, just doing my best to, to get by. You know how it goes. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking and she sits down. Do we know what the Institute is? Sure, yeah. You would assume that if she's into arcane stuff, it is literally the Institute of the Arcane. Oh, okay, yeah, is, yeah. yeah. What's the Trembling Imp? It's a coffee shop. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. I love that. You drink so much that you... <laughs> I have to in order to stay awake. It's, it's a very stressful job, early hours. But yeah, this is my lunch break and it's just so great to be here. Oh my gosh. Um, anyway, I'll be quiet so we can actually talk about the book. And Gary, what about you? We already introduced you a bit, but, you know, tell us a fun fact. Gary is like, mm, fun fact, Gary. fun fact. Um, hey, I'm Garahel, or you can call me Gary. Um, hmm. I work as, I'm an archivist assistant uh, down at the Temple of Darius. You know, I work for the head archivist. It's not not a big deal, though. I don't know why I mentioned it. Anyway, uh, yeah, that, I'm Gary. He makes a weird face and then <laughs> sits down. <laughs> and you, dear. Oh, hello, everyone. I'm Lana Verferix. Uh, fun fact about me is that I play three instruments. Um, it's very nice to meet you all. Wonderful, wonderful. I feel like maybe I've seen you play before at a party. Yes, typically I play the viol. Wonderful. All right. Well, it doesn't look like she's here yet, so let's get started. And she will start commencing the dis book club discussion. Jeremy doesn't get an intro. Oh, shit. <laughs> Jeremy. Jeremy. I forgot about you, Jeremy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Jeremy's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I just kind of stand back here. Uh, I'm Jeremy Maxwell. I'm a member of the town guard, and I'm friends here with, with Melees. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> they do a little bro I love it. Um, yeah, in my spare time, you know, I like I love reading romance novels, and that's why I'm here today. As he starts to sit down, the door slams open, the bell and the door clatters really hard against it, and in, you see, running as fast as she can, bouncing red curls, <gasps> the voluptuous <gasps> form of Mitzi St. Clair. Mitzi! She, she, she stops and she looks around and she says, oh my God, 
gosh, oh my goodness, what are you all doing here? Dylan! What? Oh, I didn't know you you were be here. This is crazy. And that's like, please sit down. It's time to start. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Um, uh, okay. And she comes and she like wedges herself between Ferris and Hilrana and just sits down there. Oh, you don't mind if I sit here, do you? Oh my gosh. Oh, not at all. I just wave at her. I'm like, hi, hi. Oh, Mealies. <laughs> <laughs> hey there. It's your DM and pal, Emily. I'm here with just a few quick announcements before we get back to the story. First up, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the TTRPGs for Reproductive Rights Bundle that went on sale about two weeks ago almost when this episode releases. At the time of me recording this, we've raised over $100,000 and that's going to be split between Planned Parenthood and the National Network of Abortion Funds. So all of this money is going directly to those organizations and for supporting the human right of reproductive rights. If you haven't picked up the bundle yet, what the heck are you waiting for? Please consider getting it if you have the means. It's over 291 creations from 200 creators for just $5. Though a higher donation is always appreciated check out the episode description for the link to get this amazing bundle. And thank you again to everyone who contributed their work to this, everyone who supported it, everyone who shared it. It just is incredibly heartwarming and has made me cry multiple times with just being so overwhelmed by the support that we've seen. And yeah, the bundle doesn't end until June 13th, so you still got some time to grab it. Thanks so much for listening to our show and for your continued support. We're where we are today because of you. If you know someone who might enjoy our spicy stories, we'd love if you'd share the podcast with them. The more people we can get to listen, the more awesome content we can create. You can also support the growth of Roll for Romance via our coffee if you are so inclined. And the link for that is also in the episode notes. Huge shout out this week to Chickadee or at YFNCW on Twitter. We always love hearing from you and your kind words mean the world to us, Chickadee. If you want your own personal shout out in a future episode, make sure to tweet at Roll for Romance. We love hearing from you. We love interacting with you. And every time we see anything from you all, it just brightens our day and makes life so much better for that moment seeing what you say. Anyway, that's it for today. Let's get back to the adventure. We need to start otherwise. This is why I ask you to come early, Mitzi. Oh yeah, I'm so sorry. So you begin your discussion of the kiss of fire. I would like each of you, if you want to contribute to the discussion, to roll, make a roll. I don't know. It, you could either do like a persuasion role to try to convince people of a point or just like an insight type role to see if you had got any useful insight on the book. All right. I got a 17 for persuasion. I got an 18 for persuasion. Nice. Amazing. I got a 15. A roll for Mitzi. That's a two. Whoops. <laughs> a quick <laughs> sidebar. Did, did, are Mitzi and Melee's friends? Because I feel like... Last time I saw her, we had a bad date and she was wanting to eat my sandwich. And I said, no. Oh, that's true. So did, did we get along? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she hates you or anything. Okay. But it's up to you. You, I think you're more just dis- have a more of a dislike of Mitzi because she mentioned that you could share a sandwich and you were like, absolutely not. Yeah. I got a 21. Whoever got the lowest numbers will go first, which would be most of these NPCs. Ah. So I'm not going to necessarily narrate everything, but Mitzi is just too distracted. Oh my gosh, I'm just, I'm just so happy to see you all. It's crazy, and and she takes like her her time of the discussion just to babble <laughs> about how what things that she's been doing and trying to get back to the book, but she never does. And so and that's finally like, all right, that's enough. <laughs> and. Next, it's going to be uh, Kelda, who's like, I- I'm so sorry, I didn't really have a whole lot of time to read the book. I kind of just skimmed it. I know I'm going to read it later because it did seem really hot. <laughs> no pun intended. But um, yeah, I really did like the relationship of the student and teacher that was going on, I guess. 
Uh, yeah, I liked that. Don't expect that from me. And then she does a little, she's a little wink though. She does a little wink though at the end. I love a Neff. I want to be more like a Neff. And then it would then be Lanny would be the next person in the All right, the Lanny um, is preoccupied with the class disparity <laughs> and goes off on this yeah. like semi like communist rant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I like it. It's a very yeah. interesting interpretation. Miles is like enraptured with this. He's probably never heard of like <laughs> anything other than like right. capitalism. So he's like, yeah. Capitalism yeah. is a trap that we are all contained within, and I do understand. Yes, aspect. it is. It is. But then again, I do like money. Money is good. Don't this we is all. tough. Anyway, and then next would have been Jeremy. Yeah, I thought this was really one of her Evangeline's better, more recent novels. Like some of them lately have been a little predictable. It's a little frustrating. I kind of would want a little bit more smut. There was a lot of pining. Not a lot of other things. Yeah, I have to my, agree with you my there. Case. Yeah, I've just uh, there was not enough sex at all. <laughs> uh, then it would be Paris. Oh, Mitzi, I definitely agree. There was yeah. not <laughs> nearly enough smart sugar. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would rather they have been so much more smart. Get a oh. room, you two. <laughs> oh, Mitzi, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, we should talk after this. <laughs> what are y'all doing later? Oh, sorry. Never mind. Oh, I'm, I'm working. We can talk later. All right. And then Mila, it would be your turn. Yeah, so I just, you know, I found the the metaphorical symbolism of it really amazing. Just that, you know, there is the, the teachers teaching the student, but really it was the student who taught the teacher. Exactly, Miles. That's such a good point. Wow, Miles. Ferris is going to lean over and go, good job, baby. He winks. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then it would be Hilrana. Well, I agree with Mitzi. There wasn't enough sex in this book. I do appreciate the pining, though, because, you know, it's like foreplay. I yes. hope the next book has more uh, of payoff, if you know what I mean. Mm, I did yes. masturbate four times while reading this book. Ah, though. yes. Only four. Only four. <laughs> yes. Well, I spent most of the time crying. It's tough. It was very emotional. It was like crying, masturbate, yeah, crying, It's masturbate. a weird roller coaster. It was. I enjoyed it, though. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Oh, I'm so <laughs> yeah. And Gary has to speak after this. <laughs> uh, do I have to Gary, speak? Yeah, yeah, do I, have to 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 I didn't know that's something we were sharing. <laughs> no, I thought that was kind of more of an unspoken thing. But um, I'm Don't gonna. Be I'll Gary. just. Uh, I'm just gonna leave that, you know, <laughs> private. But I really thought that it was interesting just from like a historical perspective. I know that her stuff is set in kind of an alternative reality, but I like the setting that she posited that. Um, the lo the lost pleasure city of Amaret was actually not destroyed, but in a demiplane of its own where people could only get there through really desiring something with their whole heart. I thought that was a very interesting and unique perspective that I actually haven't seen in a lot of my historical research. Did we read the same book? So is this a real place? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah, definitely. No, that's fascinating. Yeah, there's yeah. The, it, we should go there sometime. Oh, no, it's destroyed for sure. Uh -oh. But it is cool to think about it like existing out there somewhere yeah just and you just get there by wishing real hard as Karash did at the beginning he went to the ruin site and he revealed his heart and soul and his passion for enchanting and wanting to be part of this city and he just was transported there and I thought that was such an interesting unique take let's do it guys road trip I uh I wouldn't base a road trip well you know what fuck it that might be <laughs> <laughs> But yes, it is quite far away. It's in Sky Shella, which is to the west. But that is the birthplace of all of us. If we seriously want to plan that, we could do a trip. It would probably take a couple months, unless we got an airship. We could do like a whole Ooh. road trip based on the book and went, go to all the sites that, that the characters yeah. went to. That would be fascinating. Like an interactive book. Not to like, like could, barge in no, on your book. No, I could though. use the amulet that my mother has to take us to the different planes that they visited. It could be, you'd have to sign a pretty hefty waiver. But I'll look oh. into it. Wonderful. That sounds amazing. 
Amazing. I would love to go this to the different planes. This is the best planes. book club ever. Okay, so that is the end of your book club discussion. It, it devolves into talking about the smuttiest scenes of the... Or I'm not devolves. Devolves or evil. <laughs> it evolves into talking about the smuttiest scenes. Well, weirdly, even though Darling Mitzi is there, Ferris is very curious about Gary. Okay, so Gary's sitting kind of by himself eating a cookie. She just wants to know more about his job and what kind of things he would have access to. <laughs> sure, does anybody else want to talk to Gary while I, we're having I this do. Gary convo? Yeah, Gary's into suddenly the... very popular. Yeah. <laughs> what is Gary's job? He's the assistant to the head archivist at the Temple of Darius. Oh, yeah. I want to... I want to just be there for sure. that conversation. What about you, Hillary? I want to talk to Mitzi. Okay, so you all maneuver <laughs> over in front of Gary, who's just sitting there quietly eating a cookie and just looking down at his hands nervously mm-hmm. and looking, like flipping through the book and the, pretending like he's looking at something. I am oh, Gary. I feel you, the- Gary. <laughs> <laughs> he sees three people looming over. And uh-huh. then he, he looks up. Uh, oh, hey, uh, uh, Ferris, Mele, Slanny. That's right. I just thought your um, insight into the book was so interesting. Oh, yes. Thanks. Is Emmer at a place that you learned about at your job? Oh, I mean, I've definitely read some stuff about the things that happened. That I, I mean, I, I study history a lot. And so Emmer, it does come up in some of the historical archives. Some of the things that I've looked for, I've researched for the head archivist. It's, it's not like a main focus, but it's right. definitely something that's come up. Interesting. It was this great... As the name says, Pleasure City, where people would f- come from all over to worship Lear. A lot of times people might call it like a place of being sinful, but it wasn't necessarily that. It was more just a place of people, artists and people seeking pleasure and people that were advanced combatants that wanted to test their skills all went to this city before the untimely demise of the goddess herself and when that happened the city itself no one knows exactly what happened but where the pleasure city sat is now a very large crater oh wow so no one knows what happened to any of its occupants no one we assume that it was destroyed by the followers and the people and maybe even the god attain and and um gunvor her husband in that weird exchange. Who knows exactly what happened with the gods? It's all, right. history is not necessarily always to be trusted, the archives. You have to kind of look at them with a grain of salt. But yeah, there is no concrete evidence or really that many good working theories about what happened. So that's why I said I thought it was interesting. So Gary, you don't seem like the type that would read the tabloids, but have you been hearing whispers of things happening since the royal wedding that maybe? Lyra Jason? I, I can't say that I have. I, I'm pretty busy with most of my stuff doing research for the head archivist. I work very long hours. I have oh. to probably get back in a little bit. But um, no, no, I don't pay attention to the royals. That's not really my thing. Well, that's totally fine. Gary, I was wondering, I know we've just met, but could I give you, <laughs> could I give you my card? I would love to confer the art conversation at some point and all of us would we may have really? some additional questions that you can answer about history and lore and Lear and attain and gunvor if they would be agreeable for that make a persuasion check with advantage 19 with advantage yeah sure yeah definitely um you guys are always welcome to stop by the uh, archives at the temple of daris it's down in the lower terrace but it's right by the funicular anytime that the archive is open i'll probably be there unless it's book club day <laughs> yeah i would love to to help you out if you have any historical or research questions I, I love learning new things wonderful thank you so much i was wondering if you'd ever heard of lear marking people with their symbol making a roll for him I think that I have. I mean, I did a little bit of research into Amaret when I was reading this book. So I know that's a little nerdy. There were some rituals that people would do back in, in the day during different dedications to the goddess where they would indeed get some kind of divine marking. And other there are other types of divine marks that people are bestowed. But usually they're seen as blessings unless it's like a god cursing you. But for Lear, it was always something that just was a blessing or a gift from the goddess that was a way of connecting people to 
to her. Okay. Do you know anything about getting them off? I could do some research. I don't. I don't know about how to. No, I, I'm not a. Yeah, I'm just I'm not a cleric or anything. Like, does she mark them for life or? Typically, yeah, it was a mark for life or until I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of an example. After they completed a particular task that was dedicated towards her, then it went away. But usually when people were marked, it was because they wanted to devote themselves to her. You must have really gotten into Lear from this book. Yeah. Oh, yes. Meanwhile. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. How have you been, Mitzi? I've been doing great. I got back from the island a little bit ago. It was a really relaxing stay. Did you meet anybody there? Oh, nobody as interesting as you and Ferris. I did come back and then I've been working my job. What do you do, Mitzi? Oh, I work at Bridget's Bounty. I'm a dealer. A dealer of what? Oh, it's a casino. Oh. I guess technically I'm supposed to call myself an acolyte, but you know, it's I'm, I'm a dealer of, of cards. Wow, well, we're about to come down to the casino sometime. I'm working you. tonight if you want to come oh, visit. I'm sure Ferris would be willing to join as well. I would love to spend more time with you now that I'm in the city and you're in the city. Yeah. And I'd love to see Ferris more. Yes, I'm sure Ferris would love to see you too. <laughs> <laughs> I came to see you that night, I think. Uh, I heard, uh, oh, heard oh, some. I'm, Hilarana, she will grab your hands. I am so sorry, Oh, you Hilarana. don't need to apologize. I, I didn't, I didn't, know, if, I didn't know if there was, I wasn't sure if there was anything between us, and I didn't know there was anything between me and Ferris until she, she came up, but, you know, I did find your company very nice, and if you're interested, I would love to spend more time with you if, I, uh, I don't want to cause any drama between friends. Oh, Ferris isn't my friend. <laughs> Damn. Whoa. Oh I hardly know her. <laughs> I, are you sure? No, it's fine. But I'm also happy just being friends as well, Mitzi. Okay. I do oh. enjoy your company. Okay, Plus, yeah. I'm also, I think I might be seeing someone right now. Oh, really? You'll have to tell me all about oh, I that will. if we hang out. Okay, well then, green light on Ferris, check. Okay. <laughs> we need to make sure that Chadley doesn't find out about yeah, this no, gambling we're, hole. We're telling Chadley we're doing something really boring. Yeah, maybe he wouldn't want to go to the archivist thing, would he? Oh, he probably would for research. Oh, damn it. You know what? What does he not like? Most things. So. <laughs> Just would tell him we're not, going shopping Okay, again. shopping, shopping. Perfect. And Chadley did go home with Archie. When he's, he did not stay with you. He did. Good yeah. for him. Yeah. He's good, having some <laughs> independence. Well, that's why we can talk about Chadley is if he's not here. Because I feel he's like not here. he'd be bitter because his novels haven't been published yet. Mm-hmm. And so he's yeah. jealous. Yeah. And this would just, you know, inflame that for yes, him. Absolutely. Okay. So. We finished the book club. It's getting a little bit later into the afternoon. I think you also wanted to try to figure out how to meet up with Sono, figure out what was going on with him. So what's your plan of action for that? Barge in the door saying, what the hell is going on here? Throw something. A barge in the door of where? The palace. palace. Oh, okay. So you can make the trip over to the royal (laughs) palace gates and there are some guards standing there uh, doing their watch. Suddenly I don't think my plan is (laughs) (laughs) a good idea. I'll try and talk to one. Oh, that's probably a better idea. Yeah, you can go up to a tall bugbear in some nice shining armor. Can I say that I've brought some of the letters that Sono had sent us? Yeah, like definitely. As a way to be like, hey. So I'm going to go over and I said, hi, I'm so sorry to bother you. We've received a summons from Prince Sono and we were wondering if we could go inside to see him. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Let me look and see at who we have expected at the palace today. Thank you. She will go and go into a little guard house. She comes back with a book and she starts flipping through it. What was your name? Uh, my name is Lanifer Ferrix, um, but he was actually addressing the these letters that we have to my friend Hilrana Drama. Hilrana Drama. She'll flip through the book. I don't see Hilrana Drama here. I I apologize if there's been some kind of a miscommunication. How about Miles Gloriosis? No, no Miles Gloriosis. And you said Lanifer. I don't see Lanifer. Uh, maybe your name? Ferris Devon? No, I, I don't see any of that on the list of guests for today or or any recent days. Oh, he didn't know we were coming. We've been oh, a, out um, of town. 
Hmm. Would we be able to maybe leave him a note? I can absolutely have a note brought to him. Well, I'm sure he would want to see us. You might you might have heard of us. We we saved the prince and the princess. Wow, that sounds very impressive. <laughs> what it was. <laughs> and I think every single one of you who's been interacting with this person can make a persuasion check. Okay. 17. 16. 10. 22. Well, I don't really have the liberty to go and fetch Prince Sono. I'm not even sure if he's in the castle at the moment. I don't keep tabs on him, but I will definitely get word if you would like to leave a note for him for his servant staff, and they, I'm sure, can communicate with him as they see fit. All right. Well, if you could just let him know that we're back in town. And... If you could write a note, that would be oh, really awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to write a note, and I, uh, <laughs> I get out some paper, and I write... A nice little note. has the best penmanship. Yes. <laughs> yeah, probably. All right. Yes, I can definitely get this to someone. And uh, I'm sure that if Sona would like to see you, he can arrange a royal invitation and then we can happily let you into the palace once we have that confirmation. Was I able to see the book when she was looking through it? Yeah, make a perception check. 16. 16, yeah, you could see the names that were on the list. So we were not on the list. Yeah, you did not see your names. Okay. And actually looking at that, there were maybe two different names on the list. You can see as she was flipping through, you did notice that on previous pages there were there was a longer list of people that were coming to the palace. Mm -hmm. The people marked for today in the past couple of days and also the next few days, there are maybe one or two names. Hmm, okay. Hmm. Did I see what the names were? I'm going to say with the 16, you probably, it was too fast for you to, okay. to really focus in on exactly what those names were. No luck at the palace. From the tabloid you read and from Sono's behavior, you do know that he has been seen about town pretty much every night. Yeah. So you could try to go to one of his haunts or just worry about another town. Maybe Aquaria would know where he's at. It's possible. Yeah, because he, possible. yeah, I'll, we could try the beholder. Yeah, I probably need to check in at the beholder anyway. For the sake of time. Yeah. Ferris, you head over to the beholder. You don't see Adonis. Thank God, because you're God. not in the mood for his shit today. It's pretty quiet. It's getting later into the day, but not a full crowd yet. But you can talk to Chandra and uh, you don't see Sono there at okay. all. I'll leave a note with the, or go talk to the bartenders and ask them if they see Sono to tell him we're looking for him. Talking to them, they will tell you that he hasn't been here in a couple nights. He's been going to other places in the city. Okay. You all get a very similar result when you okay. go to the House of Heavenly Delights. He was there the previous night, but the bartender is very reluctant to even give you that information. But I yeah. think because they've seen you a couple times yeah, coming they know in and out, that they have more of a rapport with you. But no dice. So he is somewhere in one of the hot spots in the upper terrace, but neither of the ones that you've been to before. What was the name of the place that Mincy works at? Bridget's Bounty. The only other place we know of is the Fairy Fire, which we've been banned from. <laughs> <laughs> Do other we know than... other spots? The other big hot spot currently, other than the Empress Theater, he could be going to a show tonight, would be Bridget's Bounty, the big gambling hall. Let's go gambling! Gambling. Yes. It is likely that if he is at any places other than these two, that it would probably be there or the theater. Oh, the theater. Sona doesn't seem But I'm like telling a... you it's not the theater. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go gambling! We just feel it in our bones. Do you all want to go to Bridget's Bounty? Yes. 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 Do you get changed before you go? Yeah. Yes. Okay, That's we're not going to go now. through everybody's outfits. <laughs> outfit montage. <laughs> if you can tell me your outfit in 30 seconds, we I will let you each tell me what your outfit is. It's a suit. A suit. Perfect. What color? D d lavender. Lavender. I love it. I really Strapless, like Strapless, backless jumpsuit. Lavender. <gasps> Double Double lavender. Lanny. I'm wearing a pantsuit that's like... Forest green. And Hilrana. Hilrana is wearing a sequin corset. And no and pants. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, she makes her clothing out of her body, so. Oh, yeah. like Columbia. Yes. Not yes, much. like Columbia. Little yeah. shorts. Perfect. Little short shorts. Chadley sees you all leaving the house in these outfits and looks suspicious. What do you tell Chadley about what you're doing? Jury duty. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
We all have jury duty. He looks at you very suspiciously. Make a persuasion check. Eleven. Chadley <laughs> with it right now. Yeah. looks oh, at boy. you, Hilrana, with an angry, betrayed look, and then just storms off to your room. He bought it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's what happened before you left the house. Chadley well, is right pissed. before everybody else, right? As everybody's walking out the door, Ferris is gonna run back to Chadley's door. <gasps> and she's gonna tap on it gently. He opens the door at the base, looks at you. We're going gambling, you little shit. Suck it. And then she's gonna <gasps> run. <laughs> Oh, oh no! He's gonna murder you. Oh, you have started something. Damn. All right, that's how you want to play it. I love this starting drama for no fucking reason. That's amazing. Oh, that's Ferris. So you all head to where Bridget's Bounty is. You round the corner where the giant Empress Theater is, and it's nighttime now. But in the distance down this street, you can see illuminated with all these different multicolored arcane lights. They're glittering off of a completely golden temple. And you walk down this cobblestone street, the light gets brighter and brighter. It's just this beacon of gambling and fortune and and fun. Yeah, you approach. There's just one person that you would assume was an acolyte of the goddess Bridget, who's the goddess of good fortune. It's a very, very tall orc. And they say to you, May the goddess smile upon you this evening and gives you a very bright and cheerful look as you pass. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Have a great time. Thank you. As you get closer and the light is shining, that the little cobblestone path that was there has a bunch of coins inset into it. You go through the main doors is of the place. Is try to try the coins? <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably think about it if I see a platinum. <laughs> you see a couple platinum. Okay, but there, there are guards, certainly. Yeah, and they're literally, like, set into the pavement. Yeah. It's not, like, you just can pick it up. There is, in the main foyer of this building, a large golden statue of a beautiful dwarven woman. And you can all see that her feet look very worn, like they've been touched many times. Ooh, Paris is going to run over and touch those feet. Sure, you touch the feet. Who else wants to touch Who else feet? wants to touch the I'm feet? touching the feet. Okay, so you touch the feet. You even see a couple people come in after you and touch the feet before they go in, just like a little rub and then and then head on in. Yeah, sure, why not? Sing with any more guys. Yes. Oh, I don't like oh, you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> after this, this entryway, it, it opens up into a very large sprawling gambling hall with all kinds of different games of chance. You are here hopefully on a mission, though you're not necessarily here to gamble. Well, twofer. Mitzi did say she was working tonight. If anyone wants to do a perception or investigation check to try to find uh, Sono, Mitzi, whoever you want to in this space. A 17 to find Sono, actually. Okay. Yeah. I got a 12 to find Mitzi. I got a 20 to find Sono. Got an 8. It's like a casino where yeah. it, there's noise everywhere. There's people over in a dice game Sensory just overload. shouting. There's one person on one end throwing dice and then the other one throwing dice and they start screaming at each other. It's just overwhelming. And you didn't touch the feet, so you have bad luck now. Oh. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Always touch the feet. You do, after a little while of weaving through the different tables, because you know that she said that she dealt cards. All of the different dealers have on these golden corset tops and long skirts with a big slit up them. And you finally do see lovely Mitzi in her uniform dealing cards at a table with a number of just totally enwrapped gamblers looking at her with delight and laughing and having a great time. Of course they are. Then so finding Sono, there is a very large wheel towards the back of the space that people go up to and spin. You don't know exactly what the game is, but you'll, you see cheering. There is a beautiful blonde woman in a green silk dress that's currently spinning the wheel and like laughing. And then she runs over towards a table that's over near it and gives somebody a kiss on the cheek. And that person is Sono. Mm. He is sitting there watching just from his seat, drinking a little bit from a glass. Oh, Sono. What do you all do? I'm going over to Sono. Yep. Okay. So Approach. you can give Mitzi a little wave and she'll be like, oh, but she has to. She has to stay. She has to do her job. Capitalism is a prison. (laughs) (laughs) 
you can make your way over to Sono, who is just sitting there sipping, looking over at the wheel, sipping doing a, a clap juice. every once in a while. <laughs> and he will eventually notice that you all are, are coming over and stand up and say, oh, wow, it's you guys. Hey, hey, nice to see you. Oh, uh, it's good to see you, Sono. You sent Hirana a number of letters. We thought... Oh, yeah, uh, I did. Yeah. I did do that. But, you know, it's not really a big deal. Um, it's fine that you weren't there. Everything's great. Perception check. Perception check for real. <laughs> 15. Are you doing perception or insight? I got, I'm doing insight. I got a 21. I was still in perception, but what are you trying to perceive? Well, I guess maybe an insight because I'm trying to see if he's lying. Yeah, that would be insight. Okay. Got a natural 20. <gasps> oh, no, Miles cuts right to Miles. the heart of so no. Miles, you look at him. He is, everybody can tell that he's lying. You know that it seems the kind of lying, not of a personal choice, but more that he has been told to say certain things. Essentially, it seems to you like he has been told by the palace to say something and to not say things. So that's why he's saying what he's saying. Can I grab him by the elbow and then try to take him to a lot more secluded area with everybody. Whoa, uh, whoa. Uh, darling, I'm going to have a conversation with these folks. And she's like, yeah, that's fine. And she goes back to gambling <laughs> with the wheel. So yeah, you can definitely pull him over to a more secluded area. All right. So no. What's up, man? He wrote all those letters. I can't recall right now what they said, but it sounded bad. He's going to make a perception check to see if anyone is around that's listening. Pretty good. Okay, yeah. Sorry, guys. It's just, I you you weren't around? It's been a long time, Miles. It it's has great been. to see you. I joined a cult. It's really, I don't want to talk about it. I, I get it. <laughs> I, I, I think we've all been there. Yeah. Oh, hyper shred. He says under uh, no, his breath. No, not, not hyper. Oh. That one's for sure a cult. I was thinking about joining. No, do not. Okay, good. Thank you. Do not. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, great. Um, yeah. So you weren't around. I realized that there was no point to trying to convince my mother and my sister about what I was trying to say. They thought I was being crazy and irresponsible. And who would listen to me? I mean, really, who would listen to me? And I didn't have any proof. So I've learned it's better just to shut up and not say anything and say exactly what they want. We're here now and we can be your backup. I feel like it's a little late. I, I'm not trying to blame you all at all, but things are definitely still escalating pretty quickly. They've shut down the palace. They're not letting anybody else in there other than super trusted people. So I don't think I could get you to see them and they're not listening to me. Proof of what? That something happened at the wedding that would have caused Grant to leave, other than just him cheating on me. Not cheating on, well, not cheating on me. Oh, that's well, not well, cheating well, on him and really. Bernadette cheating on, on me and, and Celeste. I believe you all. I don't think that's what happened. But no one cares or listens to me. I'm just so no. What do you think if we could convince the Grand Archivist? Do you believe your sister would listen? I don't know. She's pretty pissed. There's... Okay, so there, there's also the component of other people not liking the Black Cloud Islanders to begin with. Mm. And we, uh, I kind of get it. Like, we can't seem weak in those, in their eyes. It's already a black mark on Celeste. Uh, my mother was going to step down. She was going to take over. And now they feel like they have to sort this shit out and confirm that she has the ability to lead and be strong after this debacle with the wedding. I don't like it, but there are plenty of people in the nobility that would jump at the chance to oust us if we don't have Claudian strength. Did Prince Grant actually leave or was he like really kidnapped this time? Not fake kidnapped. I don't know. I don't know. It's all really weird. I S Celeste swears that she saw him with Bernadette in a very compromising position. And then he left immediately after that. Oh, wait, what, what compromising position? She was on his lap. There seemed to be some kind of kiss being exchanged, and he was, not to be indelicate, but obviously aroused. Oh, good Lord. That's it? I don't know why he left, but Celeste was angry, and then he was gone, and Bernadette was gone. 
We had the elderly punching each other at this wedding, obviously, I, people. Listen, you don't have to tell me. Oh, I know. So, no, I'm sorry. Here's the thing, though. I'm going on a diplomatic mission where I'm going to go talk to some other members of the nobility to try to assure them that we're doing great. This is a position of cloudy and strength, getting on the airship in a few days. But, you know, what if old Sono happened to get kidnapped by a bunch of sky pirates oh, not kidnapped again oh my god i've like arranged lesson. everything already you know what's oh, gonna happen so no. <laughs> oh, so no. listen i understand why you'd be skeptical but i don't know any other way of me to easily get free of this and be able to figure out what the fuck is going on with grant i just feel like your go-to is always kidnapping what else am i supposed to do <laughs> well now it's what he knows <laughs> <laughs> Could, would you have uh so have you first of all verified that these aren't in fact actual pirates listen i did the best that i could with, oh, without notifying people but i have been assured that captain razor claws a uh, mercenary guild and her pirate ship oh, Lord. Will, will definitely do a great convincing job of taking over the ship grabbing things and taking me as a hostage oh sugar you're gonna be killed. And even if it works out that she is actually a pirate and, and kidnaps me, at least I would have some way of potentially escaping without it causing a political disaster. Oh, this just sounds like a terrible plan, Sugar. I'm I know, sorry. but that's all I can do. Well, when are you supposed to be uh, kidnapped? When are you leaving? Uh, the airship leaves in two days. Two days. Oh, God, it's two days from now. I got to pack. Will you at least give us a chance to try to figure out a plan B? You can come with me if you want. Oh, Be we could. With you? Um, yeah, if you, if you all were kidnapped with me, oh then uh, there would definitely be no chance of me actually getting kidnapped. I've you could already fight been off those kidnapped pirates. this month, and that's I'm only willing to do once a month Well, you, I'm just saying, maybe you could be my personal guard on this diplomatic mission, and then the, the ship gets attacked, there's a terrible fight. Maybe maybe I, I'm ho I'm horribly injured and Wait, you have to take me somewhere. what are you trying to? I'm trying to get to the Black Cloud Islands. Why don't you just travel to the Black Cloud? Because I can't. There's a currently like a no-fly zone, essentially. Why would your kidnappers be able to get there? Because they're pirates. Pirates can go in airspace that Cloudian military ships and nobility ships can't so go into. No. This actually doesn't sound like too bad. If no, I it's a yeah. terrible idea. No, I mean, the kidnapping I, is definitely, no, you, you know, know, what's going to happen. Think of something else. The pirates are actually going to kidnap him because well, he's yeah. royalty and then they're going to ransom him. But, but if we're is, there, if you're there, then they won't stand a chance against all of you. Yeah. Let's not do a kidnapping. Okay, well, what else am I going to do? I don't Can know. Can we pretend to be pirates joining their pirate crew? I like You that. could be the pirates that kidnap me. Oh, costumes. Well, that does seem safer. <gasps> but how would we get uh, admittance to the Black Cloud Island? We're uh, pirates. I may have a way to, to get use of an airship. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> okay. It might be possible to, to borrow one um, from someone I know. Do okay. any of us have any idea how to operate an airship? <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend who might be able to. I can ask. Okay. Does Jeremy know how to operate an airship? <laughs> You're probably, probably not. Okay. He's a city guard. <laughs> Maybe you could uh, join the pirate, the woman's crew that was going to already be doing it. Yes. You all seem like your capable I mercenaries. I am not getting involved with actual real pirates. I'm willing to be a fake pirate. I'm not willing to... Uh, join with real pirates okay i've done that before is the thing and it never turns out well i'm just so glad you all are here and you're helping out i'm so excited now that i don't have to be kidnapped by actual pirates wow. you may still be actual kidnapped by actual yeah, pirates. it's better than staying at the palace right now let me see if i can contact some of my resources about uh borrowing okay that airship yeah if, money, if you need money for this, I'm happy to provide. Honey, I'm probably going to need some money. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Why don't we break into the palace and kidnap Celeste? That's a terrible idea. You will be hanged. <laughs> <laughs> I would just really love it if we could all just give up the idea of kidnapping as like 
I know. It's yeah. just that's all they really warn you against as a prince. They're like, be sure don't you don't be- get kidnapped. I'm sure you understand I as somebody guess, who's I'm rich. Very aware. You know, that's the main issue is getting kidnapped. So that's that's why that's my fallback. I'm sorry. I'm so boring and unoriginal. Okay, perfect. We'll work out the plan more. How about we have an evening of gambling to celebrate our adventure together? Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> if you if we kidnap you, what if someone rescues you? And then we get charged with kidnapping. Listen, we'll figure out the details. Let's have some fun!